What if I told you you could use houseplant potting soil in a fish aquarium to get crazy, crazy plant growth? A lot of people don't know this, but this is a hack. And in the hobby, a lot of big brands don't want you to know this because they want you to buy their expensive gravel and fancy plant substrates. But today, I'm gonna show you a quick guide on how you can easily do this. My name is Chris and welcome to Houseplant Therapy. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use houseplant soil in your fish aquarium aquarium to have crazy aquarium plant growth. But please give this video a like and consider subscribing. You want to get yourself some organic potting soil. And I know it's going to be a million questions. What brand do we get? Can we get the same brand you use? So you want to find a fish aquarium that you're going to be using and get yourself some organic potting soil. And we're going with organic just because it's a little safer. You got to remember, this is going to be a fish aquarium where fish live in. So what we're going to do is I literally will dump enough dirt in the tank to get around two inches of soil, two to three inches. And a lot of people are probably thinking, hey, you know, I've heard that you have to bake the dirt in your oven or you have to put it outside in the sun to kill off stuff, guys. There's a lot of guides that tell you you have to bake the soil, you have to throw it in the sun. I literally do none of that and I just throw it into the aquarium. I think that's why it's a big deal to buy the organic. What I'm gonna do now is add water because what we wanna do is we wanna mash, we wanna make sure all the dirt is absorbed with water. This is a huge deal. You know, a lot of people set up dirt tanks and what they do is they put the, the dirt in there dry and then they put the sand in there dry. That's not what you want to do. This is probably the biggest, uh, this is the biggest deal when it comes to setting up a dirt tank because we want to make sure that the dirt is as waterlogged as possible because what happens is if you have trapped air in the dirt at a later date, you get these air pockets and they just destroy your tank because they float up, the, the, it's a nightmare, trust me. I've done a lot of testing doing this. And uh, what you wanna do is sit here and squeeze this stuff for like five to 10 minutes. You wanna make sure all the, all the air is out and it is all, uh, how would you say it, absorbed with water. You want like a really watered down mud. And um, some people ask, why don't you take the perlite out? And that's the little white things in the dirt. That's, it's just, I don't have the time, dude. Like I've, I've been there. It does look kind of ugly. Sometimes if you see it at a later date, but you know, a lot of the perlite kind of gets covered. I don't know. I just try to keep this as simple as possible, but this is the biggest deal guys. Set aside 10 minutes and just make sure all of this is just pushed out and smothered with water. So we've added the potting soil to the aquarium. We have fully saturated it. We want to remove all the sticks and things that float the big pieces out of it. Um, guys, I need to forewarn you here though. Um, putting soil in an aquarium, you're going to be adding a lot of ammonia. So this means that we're not gonna be able to be keeping fish right away. There's only two ways. Holy smokes. <sighs> That's wet sand. We're gonna put the sand on top and I wanna to preach to you guys, as I put the sand on, there's only two ways to fix ammonia. Number one, water changes. Or number two, using plants. Because the biggest downfall to using dirt is the ammonia. The method I use to bay this ammonia issue is I use floating plants, invasive floating plants. That's without planning on getting rid of the ammonia, this dirt tank setup isn't gonna be all that great for you. And, sorry, what I'm doing here is I'm just sprinkling the sand on here. This isn't rocket science. Dry sand works a little better because it's, it's less heavy. This is wet sand. Uh, I just literally grabbed from the same tank. What I did was I just uh, removed the sand, put dirt in there, and now I'm putting the sand all over it again. But yeah, guys, without figuring out the ammonia issue, this dirt tank isn't gonna go well. I, I can just see tons of people messaging me, hey, uh, my fish are sick, or I have tons of algae in the tank, because with ammonia, you're gonna get a lot of algae, just uh, cloudy water. Ammonia is a scary thing, so I just wanna preach. Right, guys, so I think that's about good on the sand. Uh, I do about an inch, maybe an inch and a half, 
And then what I do is I just come in here and I kind of just smooth it down and make it flat. And also another thing, the next step is to obviously fill the tank with water, right? Um, when it comes to filling with water and dirt tanks, you gotta be very careful because if we break this surface of sand with the water current coming out of your hose and you just let that dirt just start flinging everywhere, it's gonna be a nightmare, trust me. Ask me how I know. All right, so let's put this down in a spot where it goes. And P.S., these things are really heavy, full of wet mud, huh? Ironically. Ah. Dear Lord. All right, so I think we are ready for water. So when filling my dirt tanks, I always, I always use a glass jar like this. It just sits on the bottom, and it works perfect. And what you do is you put your hose in the glass jar. This isn't rocket science by any means, but, uh, and then what we're gonna do is just fill it with water. So you put the holes in there, and I always advise people to use clamps. I don't know, that's just how I do things. All right, so you might be a little confused on the ammonia thing I was talking about. You don't need to overthink this. Uh, what I'm saying is that when you put potting soil in an aquarium underwater, it's going to leach ammonia into the water. And really, there's only two ways to get rid of this. Number one, you can change water over amount of time, like over a couple months, just keep changing large amounts of water, or you can just fill it with plants. And that's what I advise people to do. Literally get some floating plants. You can find them usually free on Marketplace or just plant the heck out of the tank and everything's gonna be golden. But guys, do not put fish in this tank right away. This is the tank you wanna give a couple months before adding fish. And if you do, if you have to add fish, maybe add a couple small guppies because they're indestructible. You can then add your filtration to your aquarium. I highly advise that you use a double sponge filter just because it works great with floating plants. You can aim the output at the water surface. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a couple different types of floating plants from other aquariums. I've personally found it beneficial to add different types of floaters just because depending on your light and your water parameters, some of the floaters just do a lot better than others. I've done videos on pretty much every single type of aquarium floater there is, and I gotta say, most of them hate surface agitation, so if you can find a filter with the least amount of surface agitation, that's going to be super beneficial. And then you can add your aquarium decorations. We happen to love driftwood around here, so we're gonna add this cool piece of driftwood we found on the river. Um, again, what we want to do here is add a bunch of floating plants to the aquarium because there's going to be excess amounts of ammonia in the water from that soil. We want to give this aquarium some time to season, maybe a couple months before we add fish. What's also super helpful is to plant stem plants. Completely fill your aquarium with as many stem plants as possible. This is dwarf Sagittaria. If you guys know anything about it, it grows like crazy. So within a little bit of time, it's going to be growing like crazy. It's a heavy root feeder and it's going to love the, the soil in this aquarium. What's really going to help you is to actually fill the aquarium full of plants because when there's not plants absorbing the lighting, you're going to get some algae problems and that's one of the biggest setbacks of planted aquariums. As you can see, a lot of our tanks are heavily planted. Plant an Amazon sword. Look at that big Amazon sword there in the middle because the key here is to have the plants absorb the lighting so that it doesn't have a chance to grow algae using that lighting. Well guys, it's literally that simple. Get yourself some organic potting soil, throw it in the aquarium, saturate it, remove all the sticks and debris, put sand over the top of it, set up a filter, get some floating plants, and just plant the hell out of it and give it a couple months before you put fish in it because, and do thorough water changes throughout that time as well. Give it some time to season out and grow. Don't push the fish. Um, when the plants just start taking off, chances are that's when it's safe to add fish. So guys, please subscribe to the channel by the way, some of you might be wondering, um, I also have an aquarium YouTube channel named Palmer Aquatics. Um, you can go ahead and join that as well. But I figured this would be a really cool uh, thing for houseplant keepers to do because I know a lot of you are afraid of fish aquariums and you want to have those luscious planted aquariums. And it's that simple, guys.